Right here we have a beautiful red gurnard and I'm not sure what the um, the legal take home size is for that. I don't think there is one in particular, but um, yeah, the, pretty much this is a bottom feeding species. So um, a set of baited feathers from your boat would probably um, pick those off. Um, this fish here is a ling and um, catch them around rough ground, wrecks, rocks, um, bigger species around wrecks in particular, and um, deep water reefs. And um, they'll take a mackerel fillet or a lure, um, a perk or something like that, some sort of a jig. Um, relatively good eating as well. Um, that in particular, that reminds me of a sort of a New Zealand snapper, but over here it's called a red bream. And um, they're caught deeper south where the Gulf Stream is, um, Penzance sort of area. And um, that is a spitting image of a, um, of a snapper. And I think they get it in Portugal as well. But um, beautiful fish, good eating as well. This fish here is a lovely eating fish. It's a brill. And um, we catch those in the southwest, um, drifting over sandbanks with like live sand eel, um, a strip of uh, mackerel fillet. And um, five o hook, something like that. Four o hook for one of them. A beautiful eating fish. And this apparently is a, a poor cod. Don't ask me why. This has obviously got a big eye. Um, looks a bit like a pouting, um, but it does look a little bit unpeculiar looking. It's not quite white, not quite pouting. So that apparently this is this is called a, a poor cod. Um, so this one's grabbed a spinner. Um, probably like to get them more sort of um, up north. And this is a bull hus. And you get these, they're like a giant dogfish. Remind me of a Port Jackson shark. Um, they are caught accidentally sort of conger fishing usually off the rocks. Um, you know, most people put them back. I suppose you can eat them. Um, they're a bit like rock from the from the, um, the fish market, um, fish, fish shop. This is a stingray. And I was totally unaware you could catch stingray in the UK, but you can. I assume they're from beaches on the south coast in summertime. And um, yeah, that is a stingray. I'm just seeing if there's any dimensions for a stingray. Yeah, unknown. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure what bait you use for that. This is a sunfish. You often see them, you often just see the fin sticking up. If you're sort of out on a headland, sort of looking out to sea, or if you're on a boat, you think, oh, what the hell is that? Is that a shark or something like that? But no, they're a sunfish. I mean, generally, um, you don't target them. I don't know if you can eat them. They're just, like, not really targeted. This is a, uh, a what is it? It's a, it's a spiny, it's a, it's a giant spiny dogfish, which you get in New Zealand, but it's actually called a spur dog over here. Um... So yeah, that is a real decent size one there. But you can see these little spikes on here. Um, that is actually what they call a spur dog. This is this little rogue here is a rockling. They're um, not greatly sought after. They're caught sort of accidentally targeting cod. Um, they're sort of a bottom dwelling species. They're a bit of a like a baby ling. Um, nickname for this species is a slug, um, and you can see why. Um, but yeah, very similar to the ling, which I show you on the on the other slide this is a shad now apparently they're making a, um, a comeback um, I think the Tamar River is getting a few um, and there that is officially that is like <laughs> where, the, where the Rapala shad gets its name from that is fish is actually called a shad never caught one never seen one it's like a giant herring almost if you, if you, if you look at look at the body there now this fish here that's a bass that's a sea bass um, this fish in particular apparently is the unofficial UK record and it weighs 22 pounds. Um, these sort of fish that size are a lot more common further south in Portugal, but um, yeah, he wasn't allowed to claim that um, because he didn't kill it, he returned it, you see. Now this fish in particular, this is, I believe, a Stary Ray. Um, and yep, yeah, it's, um, don't ask me why, it looks a bit like a formback ray, um, but it's got lots of spikes on it, but yeah, that's a, that's a Stary Ray. And obviously we get the cod, um, or unicorns as we call them nowadays. Um, but this is a real specimen off the beach as well. That, um, I don't know how old that photograph is. That looks quite a white, look, looks maybe 10 or 15 years old, that photograph. Um, but yeah, haddock, 
um, off off the rocks here. This is um, you know more likely to be caught in off Cornwall boat fishing um, or some very deep water, um, maybe just off sort of Scotland somewhere like that. But yeah, good eating, good eating fish. Um, you get them on lures, you can get them on baits. Um, quite hard to catch. I've caught some in Norway. This is a herring, um, good pike bait. Um, you can net them, you can get them on sabikis um, if the water's clear enough, if you're further out to sea. Um, there's quite a lot in the North Sea and um, very oily fish, fantastic bait. Um, good for uh, form back ray. Um, and this fish here is called a scad or horse mackerel. Um, it's like you catch them accidentally while mackerel fishing usually. Um, they're they're not such they're not that great for bait. You will you will conger will take them, but they would prefer a mackerel. Um, so yeah, it's like you can use it. I've used them for live baits for tope sharks in New Zealand, um, and um, they're pretty effective. They're, obviously, this is the mackerel. Um, you know, very oily content, good eating, um, good live baits for bass, and yeah. I think the minimum the minimum size is three hundred mil. I think from the shore. So yeah, it's um, yeah quite easy to catch. Just bare hooks on their own will do for them. Um, I'm just trying to think. What I was going to say about mackerel. Yeah, they commercially land them up in um, in Newland, and um, yeah, they sort of they need to be put on ice straight away. They they flash deteriorates quite quickly. Now this is it is a. Um, it's a sole. It's. I'm just trying to envisage what sort of sole it is. It's. Um, hang on, it's not a lot good for you, is it? Um, I think it's a Dover sole, and the minimum size is 24 centimeters. Um, yeah, that's that's the that's the Dover sole. Lugworm will get you one of them. Um, smallish hooks, and obviously this is a short core place. That's an absolute fantastic fish. Um, size one hooks you want for that, but a fish that size you'd probably get on quite a large hook. Um, but that's a real decent one, that is. Lovely orange spots. And here we have the um, the Ting, Mr. Ting, Whiting. He's taking a sand deal there. I've actually caught Whiting on whole squid. They will literally eat anything. Um, edible crab. Um, big old edible crab there. That's a real decent one, that. Um, good eating. You really want one of these in, um, in, in, in softy state. So you can chop it up and use it for bass. Brilliant bass bait um, when they're all lovely and soft. And um, yeah, you can free free line with those off the beach at night for, for a big old bass. Now this species here is a hake. Never caught one, never seen one. Um, I, don't, I think they're fairly good eating. They sell them to Spain um, for a real good price. Um, and um, yeah, it doesn't really resemble anything other than a hake. You know, it's not a cod, it's not a pollock, it's not a ling. It's a quite unique, really good, quite sharp teeth. This is a grey mullet. Um, I think there's another species with a thick-lipped mullet or something like that, but these can go quite big, up to eight or nine pounds. And float tackle, using maggots is, is a good technique, apparently. Um, fishing in kelp beds areas um, over a high tide where a lot of the... Um, insects are sort of washed back into the sea from from all the all the seaweed. This is a gilt head bream, and it reminds me a bit like a um, Australasian snapper. Yeah, it's silver, um, and um, yeah, it's um, you know these guys will eat mollusks, crabs, um, pretty much anything, squid, live live squid. Um, you know they'll eat absolutely anything, but they're um, I've never never caught one. I've caught sea brain before. This is a red mullet, um, and um, yeah, that's um, that's a, a really interesting species. I don't what well, species I don't know much about. This is a um, a witch sole, or no, sorry, a witch flounder. This 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 one in particular, um, and again, I think they're more prevalent in the West Country of the of the UK, and. Um, they look like they'd be pretty good eating. I don't know that for a fact, but they looks pretty look very similar to a dab. Now these are a dab, quite smallish sort of um, fish. The dab, but they they're, they're quite quite good eating. And um, yeah, small hooks, love one. We'll pick those off. And this is a lemon sole, I believe. And um, the 
long and sort of thin and very sort of smooth skin. Um, I'm not quite sure where that is. That looks like, um, like the Bristol Channel almost. Um, but yeah, small hooks, lugworm, we'll get you those. Ragworm as well. Nice smock he's got on there. Um, this is, I've caught these. These are black bream. And um, small hooks you want for that. You can get them in deep water over wrecks and things like that. Um, harbour walls, get smaller species around harbour walls and you know things like that. But deeper water around wrecks, you'll probably um, get the bigger species. Good eating. This is a giant cool fish. Now this is this is obviously not in the UK. This photograph. Um, this is actually in Norway. But these species, probably not quite that size. You probably could get them. Over the wrecks, you can get cool fish like this over the wrecks in the UK. Um, but yeah, just use that photograph because it's a good close up of the cool fish. Now, this is a common skate. Um, this is probably in Scot Scotland. And you can, they're absolutely huge. This could even be Ireland as well. You get these these common skate in, um, in Ireland, absolutely huge. They take you an eternity, see all the harnesses he's got on, they take you an absolute eternity to get them off the bottom. Is the hardest thing, um, but when they do come, they stuff like that. Congreal, fairly decent sized congreal there, um, right right around the you know the UK coast. Um, good sort of sport fish. You certainly know you've got a good one. You know if you've got a good size one, you certainly know you've got a good one. This is just a common eel. I've got a picture here with a pike, a greedy pike. He's grabbed the lure as well as having this giant eel in his gob as well. So that pike's probably about seventeen pounds, I'd say. Um, and here we have a flounder, just a common flounder, which you get off the shore. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the sizes of the, um, the common flounder is. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's probably about 22 centimetres, something like that, I'm guessing. These are garfish. Really good bait. Um, fairly hard to catch. Um, you probably want to use bits of raw steak for these on a float, on, on sort of um, quite light tackle and smallish sort of hooks. Um, and um, yeah, they um, these, these are gutted here, ready for the barbecue. But yeah, garfish. Um, and here we have a grey gurnard. So uh, identical to the red gurnard, it's just that it's grey. Don't ask me why, whether it's a seabed, whether he lives in a load of weed, or what, I don't know. It's just that you know his pigmentation is displayed as, um, as grey. Th this is a halibut, and this picture is taken in Norway. However, halibut like this have been caught um, from ports such as Whitby in the UK. Um, so they do exist on the, um, on the British Isles. Quite rare, but they're there. And... Um, yeah, you can just you know look at the sun on it. Uh, this is a John Dory, and John Dory is a predator, and he um, sneaks up. He's a very narrow fish, and he sneaks up on his prey, and he just sucks them in with his mouth there, and he uses this little dot on his body to distract them. Um, maybe thinking the fish think that's his eye, so they'll um, go nearer to his mouth and be more relaxed, hanging out there, so it's easy for him to catch. These are dogfish. Literally everywhere, they love mackerel. They love sort of fishy, fishy mackerel baits, and um, they will just home in on it and just gorge, gorge on it, and usually hook themselves. The hooks are with a barb are difficult to get out of their mouths, and it can they shake it and shake it and shake it to get the bloody hook out. They just bleed, but they're so robust, you can just toss them back in and they'll just swim off. This is a megrim, never caught one. Um, more of these down the southwest. Uh, again, I'd imagine very good eating. Um, it was almost like a very small brill, looking at the pattern of its um, of its skin there. This is an anglerfish, and massive jaws. They're sort of caught around wrecks. Um, when they grab a perk um, or a fish bait. Um, they're quite hard to catch. This is a pollock. You Loads of them around the UK. This is a quite good size one, um, and again they, they like you know they'll take lures. They like taking lures, and um, 
and things like that. They'll take a bait, they'll take a retrieved sort of mackerel fillet, they'll take a retrieved sort of eel, plastic eel, jelly worm sort of thing. Um, they'll take sort of feathers. Um, quite a good eating fish as well, you know. They're not too bad, you know. Um, so yeah, this is a pouting. He grabbed a little jig there. Nice with the sun on his skin there. And um, good live bait. Good bait for conger as well. Alternate bait for a conger eel if you're boat fishing over a deep water rink. Having a whole one of them on. Live bait. Um, bass. Bass will take them too. So yeah, the old pout. Like lugworm too. Now this is a blonde ray. A blonde ray that would be on the south coast. When the water's a bit warmer. Isle of Wight, places like that. Pick them up. And this is a cuckoo ray, whose um, distinctive two sort of dark sort of spots on its back there. Um, again, you, you get them in the same sort of areas of, of, all, of all the other rays. And um, yes, yeah, quite a, quite a, um, quite an, an interesting sort of pattern there. And here we have, I think I believe that is a small eyed ray. I'm pretty certain that is a small eyed ray. This one in particular is a spotted ray. And it's um yeah there's quite a lot of different different rays in the UK. Fish baits all you know size two three hook fish baits. This is a form back ray or scape. Form back ray there it's tails or fawny. You can, you can, there's meat on the wings, you can. There's a lot of messing around, but you can do it. And this is an undulate ray. Um, and, um, yeah, it's got a unique sort of pattern on there. So you get quite a nice selection of different rays in the UK, if you like that sort of thing. Quite hard to get off the bottom. This little critter here, I believe, is a monkfish. And um, you can, their, their flesh is, is, is very tasty. Um and um, what a gruesome monster that, eh? Getting devoured by that. How horrible. Sharp teeth, look. Big eyes. It's almost like a dog. Um, this is a poor beagle shark. That's a poor beagle shark. Landed there, and that's a decent sized one as well. And um, Ireland. You can fish with them in Ireland. West Country. Um, I believe off Wales as well, you might run into them. Um, you sort of catch them while blue shark fishing, run into them that way. And um, this is a blue shark, beautiful fish. I've had blue shark up to 90 pounds. And one thing that you do notice about the blue shark is how really, you know, that real lovely blue, top of the blue colour of the fish, it just blows you away being in the presence. Big fins, um, big old tail, real beast. And that the, the, this is the blue, which of, of that of that particular shark, which just blows me away. This is a Marco shark, Mako, Marco, whatever you want to call it. Um, you do get them off um, our coast, um, but you don't really hear about and get caught too much. This picture is actually taken, I think, in San Diego, and because um, it shows a nice close up of the Marco shark, you can catch them in New Zealand. Um, and um, they'll take grab spinners, the Marco shark. This is a smooth hound, a decent sized smooth hound, it's probably a female. And um, yeah, I mean, I've had I've had fish as big as that, if not bigger. I've had them 19, nearly 20 pounds off beaches in New Zealand. Um, and you certainly know you got them on. It's, uh, yeah, they're like crab baits. Really fond of a crab, um, hardback crabs, peeler crabs. And night time, I think, is, is, is best to target them. They seem to be more active. This is a fresher shark. And it's um, distinctive by its, its large tail there. And again, it's like, you know, they're, you, just, you run into, you know, fishing for other sharks. You know, you all go out blue shark fishing. And... Um, you know, you can run into these these sort of species. Um, they don't catch that many around the UK, but they're there. And um, they use the tail to um, attack prey, whip the prey to stun the fish, to help them catch. 
Um, yeah, so I think when they measure these sharks, they measure the tail to, to the end, so they seem a lot bigger. But this is a taupe, a taupe shark. Um, again, fish baits for those, and um, yeah, you can get them, you know, get them all around the coast really. This is a trigger fish. Uh, I think you can get them off Chesil Beach. Triggers a bit like a John Dory shape. Um, they look like they eat crabs and mollusks and things like that, but he's obviously out in a boat and he's run into one. But yeah, quite a sort of a unique fish and quite rare. Um, but yeah, you do get West Country. This is a turbot, and this is a brilliant eating fish. Really fun to target. That's a real beauty, that one there. Very, very tasty fish to eat. Very tasty. And you just get them drifting over banks, using fairly heavy tackle, with like a 5 hook, something like that. Like I was fishing with a a live sand eel or a whole um, mackerel strip, something like that. This is a uh, bluefin tuna, which are making a comeback to the UK off the off, off Cornwall. And um, it looks like now we can go out to sea and we can watch somebody bring one to a boat and tag and release, which would be would be nice. And um, hopefully this time we can sort of keep them hanging around a bit longer by not nicking all their food. And um, yeah, so it's great that they've come back. Uh, this is a balan ras and um, beautiful fish. Um, they love a crab, they love a lugworm. They um, very fond of a hardback crab, and yeah, Cornwall's good to target them from the rocks, anywhere around the rocks and kelp, and Ireland in particular. Some real monsters off Ireland. Um, balan ras. Now this is what they call a wreck fish. It looks like a, a, like a grouper, like a hapuka. In, in New, New Zealand, it's got a little bit more pattern on it, um, some spikes just to here, um, and apparently you get them, they sort of quite high up near the near the kelp floating around, which I find hard to believe, because I think for me they're like a bottom dwelling species, but um, there you go, that's that's what they call the wreckfish, now this is a, now I think that's an angler, that's another picture of an angler fish I've got in there, I may have already captured that a bit later on in the, in the, in the film, but that's a, a little miniature angler fish. Um, they're almost a bit like a flathead, like a giant sort of chubby sort of um, bulldog flathead. Now this is a cuckoo ras. Cuckoo ras, different, lovely different patterns on it. I think I may have actually caught one of those, a little one off a boat or something. I think. And um, but yeah, beautiful. So you've got the balan ras, the cuckoo ras. Um, just trying to think if there's another one. I'm not sure, not sure. Now this is a weaver fish. Now do not touch those black spikes there. And do not tread on it. Otherwise you'll be in a hospital. Somebody's sucking out the poison. Um, horrible little bloody things. I wouldn't use them as a live bait. Um, but you can sometimes catch loads of them when you sort of drift in sand, bank, sand banks for sand eels. Right, chaps, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you later.